Well, here we go. 16th of March 2017. And time for a bit of a catch-up and a review of what's been shaking down. Uh, particularly uh, impressed with the way uh, Mark Sargent uh, from the Flat Earth and Rob Skeber, uh, not quite sure how to describe Rob, but um, sort of a theologian, a preacher, if you like, of, uh, yeah, some kind of uh, Bible-based Christian worldview. Not quite sure where you'd put him in terms of um, where his theology is actually rooted. Yeah, uh, however, these two characters, Mark Sargent and Rob Skeber, <clears throat> have definitely been out at the front of uh, smashing the globe. And I think uh, Mark Sargent has uh, <clears throat> done quite an amazing job. And he's also open to people who have different perspectives from himself, which makes, makes him interesting. One of the things that's uh, <clears throat> become clear to me is the uh, misunderstanding of what the Enlightenment has supposedly achieved. A movement that ripped itself away from <clears throat> theology <clears throat> and put man at the centre of the universe, sort of along uh, coinciding with uh, displacing the earth and putting the sun at the centre of the universe. <clears throat> so that's quite an interesting subject in itself. But I know that at um, <clears throat> this point, looking back, particularly uh, with the Renaissance and the Reformation and how they kind of dovetailed on in each other, um, <clears throat> leading lights of the Reformation, Luther without a doubt, and Calvin, um, I personally... Uh, feel more comfortable with Luther than I do with Calvin, but um, both of them had a massive contribution to reforming the known Christian world at the time. And, and um, without a doubt, uh, yeah, a uh, quite a, a massive break from uh, Catholic theology. Mm, absolutely. However, the Enlightenment uh, put us in a position where we thought we could actually construct a view of a world starting from ourselves. And uh, <clears throat> that turns out to have been absolute folly. Of course, uh, <clears throat> some uh, philosophers of science and uh, physicists actually are beginning to uh, come to terms with that. Uh, I myself personally think that physics has done us no favours for the last 200 years. Uh, yeah, and I say that because <clears throat> it has kind of um, <clears throat> disconnected itself from philosophy as well, in as much as uh, the uh, philosophy of the um, thesis, antithesis, uh, has a certain clarity and consistency that physics has, has no longer got. Yeah. So, sadly, um, yeah. Oh, the other thing, of course, is <clears throat> having um, been re-reading and rediscovering the wonderful work of Martin Luther, I also ended up <clears throat> having a careful look at Tesla, Nikolai Tesla. So, uh, <clears throat> All of these uh, men, Luther, Calvin, Tesla, all champions of the flat earth. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I haven't heard too much from uh, Mark Sargent or uh, Rob Skeber about uh, their understanding of where what the Reformation was saying. And I've, so far, I don't think they've mentioned Tesla either. So the history of ideas is really important, guys. I mean, you can't, you know, you may have thought you've stumbled upon something which is really important, but, uh, yeah, it's really good to know how ideas have developed. And 
<clears throat> without a doubt, uh, Tesla uh, made a, an amazing contribution to science as we know it. A and uh, sadly, uh, you know, he's, um, yeah, he's little known in popular culture. I mean, people obviously know about the new Tesla, the car, and I think they get confused uh, when the name is mentioned, but the car, in fact, is named after Tesla. Ironically, the man behind the Tesla car um, is uh, attempting to do uh, what Tesla would never have uh, bothered with, and that was he understood very clearly what uh, <clears throat> the firmament was, and uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, the uh, moderns uh, haven't been able to grapple with the whole notion of a firmament, sadly. Uh, not only uh, the uh, movers and shakers of our time, but uh, many of the theologians also, uh, ministers of the church and so forth, have got no idea what the firmament really is. Although Werner von Braun certainly knew, and um, he was uh, so familiar with it that there is a reference to the firmament via a psalm which is on his headstone. It was all that was there was um, a quote from the Psalms and his name. Of course, now they've added some NASA nonsense there as well. I think uh, what Von Braun understood very clearly was not what he articulated much publicly. I think he had, he had two sort of two... Uh, boxes, if you like, of thinking where what he privately knew and understood and the sort of public utterances that he made as a consequence of being part of the so-called American uh, space race and the whole idea of uh, America um, winning the war, Second World War. Not sure what it did actually, but there you are. So, uh, a lot of stuff now on the internet, on YouTube, talking about the uh, incredibly controversial notion of the flat and stationary Earth with a firmament, and I think that's the um, thing that must always be stated, is that, uh, yeah, so, uh, Mark Sargent talks about it as being a kind of like Truman-type show, um, <clears throat> Yeah, a uh, enclosed world. Right, uh, also a world that uh, we are superbly suited to. A world uh, with a creator behind it. An earth which is the footstool of a creator. And uh, yeah, one of that's one of the issues that uh, people seem to have lost sight of just been listening to an interview with a uh, physicist who talks about the accident of the existence, the accident of existence, and how we're all just part of that accident. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, it is just an amazing universe that we live in, but more importantly, this world we live in, this earth, just an incredible place and uh, very well suited to us. Yeah. So, <clears throat> uh, yeah, one has to uh, never forget the roots that we sprung from. I mean, we came out of a Bible-believing culture that established the Christian, Judeo-Christian culture. And as a consequence, it was the platform for science has developed. Many scientists today, even you know, quite well qualified scientists, are sort of naive about um, <coughs> the history of science and philosophy. 
and how philosophy was once under the uh, control of theology. Uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, here we go. Uh, not talking politics, uh, although some people may see this as being political. Um, obviously, perhaps at another time we might talk about politics and Donald Trump and all those other <laughs> interesting things. But for now, we're just um, restating and, um, yeah, um, wanting to compliment uh, the people who are doing um, the interesting work uh, <clears throat> on the Flat Earth. And incidentally, um, I've been speaking for some time about how I acquired a new camera, a Nikon P900, absolutely astonishing camera, um, without a doubt able to and is smashing the fiction of the globe. Right, well let's get this loaded up and see who's around.